Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Brother JD here. And today I would like to talk about blasphemy and euphemism. This is a big one and I see it a lot in the Christian circles today. And the thing about it is no one really is addressing this and a lot of people don't understand it. And I think it's a piece of lost information that not very many people are discussing in their uh, churches or in their Christian circles, and this is a big issue. Um, Christ always talked about sin in the heart. Um, you know, he says, if you hate your brother, you've already murdered him in your heart. And uh, he says, you know, if you looked at someone with lust, you committed adultery in your heart. You know, he, he calls us, Christ calls us to a higher standard. Um, and a lot of Christian scholars would say that Christ is actually talking about the original covenant, um, you know, this, I mean, this goes back to Adam and Eve and then the covenant God had with Abraham. And uh, let's see. And then you get to Moses and then he lays out the law for Israel. And um, <clears throat> what happened here is a lot of times these scholars will say that Jesus was actually reaffirming what had originally taken place in that covenant, which is where we have sin issues and it starts in the heart. And it becomes manifest. Um, it's like, uh, you know, you have that thought, you know, you want to steal this one little thing. It's something real small. No one's going to know, you know, and uh, the sin's already begun. You're already sinning because you're contemplating sinning. And what happens is at some point, you know, your heart's going to become hard to it. You're going to, your conscience is going to be seared with a hot iron and um, you're going to eventually steal more than likely. Um, the same thing with lust, you know, you're already committing adultery in your heart. And eventually you're going to go and fornicate, you know, if you don't put that in check real soon. And that's why, you know, us Christians, we're called to a higher standard, uh, standard of living. We're supposed to, you know, have the Holy Spirit in us that is supposed to convict us of those heart sins. And we're supposed to repent of those heart sins and uh, pray that the Spirit leads us into all truth and understanding. And so that way we're able to live a holy life inside and out. And uh, if you if you have a, uh, as Jesus would say, you know, the outside of your dish is clean, but the inside is dirty. You know, is, is your dish inside dirty? Do you have bad thoughts? I mean, you're living a sinful life inside. And God said, I'm going to judge by the heart. Like, I'm not going to, he's not only going to judge by what we physically do, but he's going to judge our hearts. And so this is very urgent. Um, so the topic, though, blasphemy and euphemism. What is blasphemy? It's any time you don't show reverence to the name of God. I don't think any true Christian would go around saying GD. Um, we all know what that means. Um, and a true Christian isn't just going to say Jesus Christ in a negative way. You know, he's going to show, he or she's going to show reverence to the name of Jesus. They're just not going to throw it around uh, and discuss or as an expression well, that's blasphemy, but the bigger issue in the, now that that's bad enough, you know, for the non-Christian, a Christian hears that and they, they just kind of cringe a little bit, but most Christians are just as guilty, believe it or not, because they're committing blasphemy of the heart and it comes out and the real Christians, the ones that's got the Holy Spirit, they can see that and they go, they just blaspheme the Lord, but the person that may not have the spirit or they're a newborn in Christ, they're blaspheming and they don't even know it. So what is that? That's that thing I'm talking about. It's called euphemism. It's where you say one thing, but you mean another. And in a lot of cases, some Christians won't even own up to the fact that they say, I didn't really mean it like that. I was just, I just always said that, but ask yourself people, what is G's short for? G's is short for Jesus. And if you go look at any dictionary, I don't care if it's Webster, I don't care if it's, uh, oh, the uh, Oxford Dictionary, you're going to see G's is a euphemism for Jesus. Um, if you do this on the internet, most people use the internet now, you click on the more, as soon as you get the definition pulled up, click more, and it will show you where it came from, uh, word for word. Uh, literally, G's came from Jesus. And a lot of people just go, geez, and they don't even know that they just blaspheme the name of their Lord. I'm talking about the Christians here. Another one that they use is called sheesh. 
Sheesh came from G's, which we just learned is Jesus. That's euphemism. That's blasphemy, no matter which way you slice and dice it. Another big one I hear these days is, oh my gosh, what is gosh? Again, go to, you can go to a uh, physical copy, the real dictionary, uh, you, or you can go to the online dictionary. They ought to tell you the same thing, no matter whether you use uh, Webster's or Oxford's uh, dictionary. It's going to tell you, gosh, is a euphemism for God. So instead of saying, oh my gosh, you're saying, you can figure that out. And that's not good, people. That's blasphemy. And uh, a true Christian would know that. You go to the Bible and you see what it means to blaspheme the name of the Lord. It's any time you don't show reverence for it. So if you're just using that as an expression or whether it's like you're shocked or you're upset, you know, you're blaspheming the name of the Lord. You're not giving it its due reverence. You know, that's just not a word you throw around. We can talk about God. We can worship God and use his name, giving it due reverence, giving it its proper respects. We don't just throw it around as an expression, just a toss around word. And we see this even in just standard cuss words. And the Bible will tell you it's not good to cuss. A Christian should not cuss. We're supposed to have control of what's on our tongue. You hear people say, darn. What's that a euphemism for? Um, or here's another one. And keep in mind, I'm, I'm saying these things so that way we know. I'm not just going to walk around and try spelling it out. I'm not going to say the actual words. But I'm going to say the euphemism. It's just as bad, but I want people to know this. These, these are not words we need coming out of our mouths as Christians. You also see the word like crap. We, we know what that means, what the euphemism of that is. And I've had people ask me, well, you know, what do you say when you want to express yourself? I'm like, I, I, try, I try not to express myself verbally in that regard. You know, if I hit my uh, finger with a hammer or if something goes wrong, you know, I, I just simply, you know, I take a breath. I sit there and I go to prayer to God. I say, God, you know, help me with this. I'm, I'm struggling right now. I'm, I'm angry deep down. I need your uh, grace to uh, uh, keep me from saying something I ought not to say inside and out. And so that's something us Christians, we need to work on uh, blasphemy and euphemism. It's very serious offenses because the Bible says we are going to be judged for every idle word. You know, the Bible talks about you can go to your Proverbs, you can go to the New Testament, Jesus quotes these, and he talks about how our words are various, very serious offenses, you know, out of the mouth comes the abundance of the heart, and so whether you're thinking it, whether you're going to say it, or whether you said it, each one is a step towards the wrong direction, so when you say it, you've done committed the sin, people heard you, that's your witness to them, they heard a Christian cuss, and they go, Look at that. There's a Christian and they're just like me, you know, and I don't believe in God, you know, they, they sound just like me. You know, there's what, 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 what can they say they do that I don't do, you know, and it's not a good witness, people. It's not good representation for Christ. And it truly does show the abundance of your heart. It shows your heart condition. Um, and then whether you think it like you're getting ready to say it, that's a different thing. You're not going to uh, let other people hear what you say. So that is a plus, is that you control your tongue, but you have to go to prayer. You have to go to prayer and say, God, I'm struggling with this. There's many times where I'll say something in my head and I go, God, I'm like, I hate this. I hate the fact that I think these things. I'd rather just not think them, but I'm not perfect. And that's why Jesus died for my sins. He covers those imperfections. But as I have uh, taught in previous videos, you know, you have to constantly be working out your salvation um, don't, don't let Satan even get a foothold on you. Don't allow that to happen. Um, it'll be a slippery slope down a sinful lifestyle. And so I tell people all the time, just go to prayer, you know, go to that, that private place you have with the Lord, get out your Bible, read his word, pray to him and say, God say, you know, I'm having trouble right now. I'm hearing this word pop up in my head and I don't like it. And the spirit will come upon you. And sometimes you know, you're going to have this instantaneous reaction where you're like, I feel much better now. And other times you're like, I don't feel anything. But let me reassure you people, God answers prayers. He just does it on his own time according to his will. He doesn't always work according to ours. That's why he's God. That's why he is great. And so we just have to be patient and we have to wait for the spirit to move. 
And so I just hope and pray that all of you, if this is something you're struggling with, you know, I pray that, you know, the spirit will come upon you and uh, aid you in this and uh, allow you to not let those words come out of your mouth. Let you be a good witness uh, to people that's not Christian. They should be able to look at you and go, there's something different about that person. And they may not know what they're seeing. They're seeing the spirit move. And so if you didn't know about this, uh, pray about it. Go to the Bible. Don't take my word for it. Uh, go there. See what the Bible has to say about words coming out of your mouth. You know, people right now, you're watching this on the Internet. You know, you can go to Google and type this in and say, what does the Bible have to say about what comes out of your mouth or curse words or, or what have you? Blasphemies. And you're going to see everything I'm telling you. It's the truth. Now, the Bible's not going to have words like euphemism. But the Bible doesn't have a lot of words that us Christians use to define God, such as omnipresent. God is everywhere, but omnipresent is not in the Bible. You know, God's a lot of things that we don't have in the Bible, but we have these words used to describe the characteristics of God. And euphemism is another one of those things. Um, it is in the Bible, just not the specific word, just like omnipresent. It does talk about the abundance uh, um, out of the mouth will come the abundance of the heart. And Jesus talks about heart sins all the time. Uh, Jesus talks about keeping your uh, tongue tamed and um, living a holy life. And holy just means separate. Are you separate from the world? You have to ask yourself that. Do you sound like the world? Do you think like the world? Um, if you want to know how to be saved, I made another video called Urgent Message. Are you saved? And so... If you don't know if you're saved or not, check that video out, and hopefully it'll give you some assurance. But I hope this video has been edifying to all the uh, brothers and sisters out there in Christ. If you're not a believer, come to Jesus, repent of your sins, trust in his name, and obey his every word. And so uh, to all the people out there watching, all my brothers and sisters in the Lord, God bless you all. And uh, I'll hopefully see you soon, God willing. This is Brother J.D.